This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, the best place to find and watch documentaries about science, history, technology, nature, travel, and so much more. We know you love to learn just as much as we do, and CuriosityStream has the best collection of exclusive, award-winning films and shows that you can't watch anywhere else. I just finished watching the second season of Art of the Heist, an incredible series that tells the story of some of the most ingenious art thefts ever, while also providing an incredible crash course in art history so you can understand just how important the object that got stolen were. It's honestly better than any made-up crime series I've watched on other streaming platforms, and their collection of content feels more like it was made for me. A Hulu for history nerds, if you will. Not to mention that it's way more affordable than the other ones, too. CuriosityStream adds new shows every week that span across every genre, from science, nature, history, technology, and tech, to military history, and even music. And you can watch just about anywhere. Mobile devices, Roku, Xbox, Smart TVs, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and more. Go to CuriosityStream.com slash infographics or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. Make sure to use promo code infographics to get 25% off, making it one of the best and most affordable streaming deals there is. So don't wait. Click the link below or go to CuriosityStream.com slash infographics and save 25% right now. Sweden is one of the only countries in the world that has managed to remain war-proof until now. For over 200 years, Sweden has been neutral in all conflicts. This included both world wars and during the Cold War. But how did Sweden manage to stay neutral for so long? And what caused it to give up its neutrality and join the one organization that could bring war to its doorstep? Before we jump back in time and figure out how a nation of Vikings managed to form a country that would not be invaded or drawn into a war since 1814, we need to examine what's happening in Sweden right now. On May 16, 2022, Sweden and Finland both applied to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The decision was made as a direct result of Russia's decision to invade Ukraine. However, up until this point, Sweden managed to stay out of every armed conflict for the last 200 years, or at least that's how it appeared. As you'll find out, Sweden's neutrality has not always been what it seems. Currently, both Sweden and Finland are awaiting acceptance into NATO. However, neither can be admitted until all countries in the organization approve their inclusion. As of December 2022, 28 out of 30 countries in NATO have approved the admittance of Sweden and Finland into the alliance. Turkey and Hungary are the only two holdouts. Each of these countries has its own agenda and ongoing internal conflicts that need to be dealt with which has influenced their decisions to hold off on accepting the two new nations into NATO at this time. This is incredibly frustrating for Sweden and Finland, as they cannot become part of NATO until all 30 nations in the organization vote and approve their acceptance. Problem is that with each day that passes, both Sweden and Finland's ability to join NATO is put in jeopardy. There are three main criteria that a country needs to adhere to in order to join NATO. The first is the nation must be a democracy with a market economy. The second is that a new applicant must reform their military to be compatible with the rest of NATO forces. The good news is that Sweden already meets both those criteria. However, it's the third criteria that both Sweden and Finland are worried about. In order to be accepted into NATO, an applying nation cannot be a part of any ongoing conflicts. As things stand right now, that's not a problem. However, if Russia ever decides to declare war on Sweden before it's ratified into NATO, their application will be forfeited and they'll find themselves in a similar situation as Ukraine is in right now. Regardless of what happens in the future, Sweden has managed to stay out of wars for the past two centuries by remaining neutral. Its geographic location is one factor that's kept Sweden out of the direct line of fire during major wars, even though it sits in a strategic area that other countries have tried to take advantage of in the past. With direct access to the Baltic Sea and its proximity to the rest of Europe, it's a miracle that Sweden hasn't been in an armed conflict in centuries. Sweden is connected to Norway to its west, Finland to its east, and although Denmark does not technically share a land border with the country, a bridge connects both nations allowing for easy access between them. Sweden's borders encompass around 174,000 square miles of land, with the Scandinavian mountains running along its western border, which is divided between Sweden and Norway. This geologic feature provides a formidable obstacle for anyone trying to invade the nation from the west. The rest of the country is made up of forests, rolling hills, and a plethora of lakes. The coastline tends to be rocky, but many bays and inlets penetrate its shores and are used by boats to access the mainland. Overall, Sweden is a nation with an abundance of natural resources and access to bodies of water that allow for trade and travel. However, it's these characteristics that make it vulnerable to invasion in both the past and present. To understand how Sweden stayed out of conflicts and remained warproof for so long, let's go back to the beginning. 
The land that would one day become Sweden was inhabited by humans sometime between 6000 and 8000 BCE. The population consisted of hunters and gatherers who lived off the abundance of vegetation, big games such as reindeer, and bountiful waters. The population continued to grow over the centuries, but the area wouldn't be unified for thousands of years. Around 800 CE, the Viking Age began. This was a time of chaos and violence in Sweden. The region was constantly at war as raids were carried out by different Viking kingdoms in Sweden. The Vikings expanded eastward, plundering trade routes along the Baltic Sea and down the riverways that flowed deep into Russia. This was also the period where the Vikings of Sweden explored the world and connected with cultures as far away as the Byzantine Empire and the Arabic kingdoms. Runes have been found across the landscape that serve as the country's oldest written documents. Most of these carved rocks are dedicated to family members and warriors that lived in the region long ago. It is crazy that a country that's managed to stay out of armed conflict for so long is made up of the descendants of one of the world's most feared people during the Viking Age. However, things start to get even more bloody as Swedish history progresses. It wasn't until the 13th century that the different Viking kingdoms and people living in the area were unified, and even after this was done, Sweden would not stop fighting in wars for several more centuries. In 1280, King Magnus Laudelos set up the Swedish society into a feudal state where kings and nobles would rule over parts of the land but would swear allegiance to him. This worked for a large part of the region, and just over 100 years later, in 1397, the Danish Queen Margarete unified Denmark, Norway, and Sweden into the Kalmar Union. Now that Sweden and much of Scandinavia were under a single rule, you'd think this would provide peace in the region, but this was not the case. In 1521, the Swedish War of Liberation began. This was also known as Gustav Vasa's Rebellion. You can probably guess who the driving force was behind the fight for independence. Gustav Vasa proclaimed himself protector of the realm as he led Sweden against King Christian II of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. After three years of fighting, peace was finally declared. Sweden became its own sovereign nation with Gustav Vasa declaring himself king and establishing a hereditary monarchy. The next several decades would see Sweden spreading its influence across the region with the goal of controlling the Baltic Sea. The ambition led to several wars between Denmark and Sweden that lasted many years. However, with an ambitious monarch and some help from allies, Sweden was able to conquer huge amounts of land in Scandinavia, and the Swedish Empire was born. But nothing lasts forever, and due to the mainly agrarian economy of Sweden and the lack of resources to create new weapons, train troops, and build vessels to aid in expansion, the Swedish Empire eventually collapsed. However, it took the combined power of Denmark, Poland, and Russia in the Great Northern War of 1700 to put the final nail in the coffin. These other countries took back the land that Sweden had conquered, reducing the nation to the size it is today. It was now time for Sweden to explore new ways of thriving, and you won't believe what they came up with. Eighteen years after the Great Northern War, the Swedish warrior king Carl XII died, which provided the Swedish parliament with the opportunity to make lasting changes to the country. The new constitution abolished royal absolutism and gave parliament the power to make decisions and run the nation. The government was set up as a constitutional monarchy. There was relative peace until 1812, when once again Sweden tried to gain control of other parts of Scandinavia. This time, however, they would be joined by a rather surprising ally. The policy of 1812 was enacted by Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, who was formerly a Marshal of France. He became King Charles XIV John of Sweden, and when the Napoleonic Wars started, Charles did not ally with France but instead looked toward Russia to claim more territory for Sweden. Russia had been a constant enemy of Sweden, but when Emperor Alexander asked the Swedish king for help to make a formal declaration that Finland belonged to Russia in exchange for Russia's help in forcing Denmark to cede Norway to Sweden, he agreed. In 1813, Sweden defeated French forces in a number of battles. They went on to invade Denmark and with Russia's help forced them to give up Norway. The Treaty of Kiel was agreed upon and recognized by the nations at the Congress of Vienna. This would be the very last time Sweden would take part in a war. So as we now know, ever since 1814, Sweden became warproof. How did they do it? Sometimes it had to do with policy, other times it was just luck. But most surprising of all were the secrets that Sweden hid during the period. After the Council of Vienna acknowledged Sweden's rule over Norway, the Norwegians were still allowed to maintain their own parliament, legal system, armed forces, flag, and currency. 
However, they had to share a common monarch with Sweden and conduct foreign affairs through the Swedish ministry. For the most part, the people in Norway were okay with it, but eventually the Norwegian government felt that in order to carry out foreign policies as they saw fit, there needed to be a breakup between the two countries. This would have led to war in any other circumstance, but Sweden agreed to send a delegation to meet with the Norwegians. On October 26, 1905, King Oscar II of Sweden renounced his claim and any future claims by his descendants to the Norwegian throne. Throughout the negotiations, it was decided that allowing Norway to be independent was a much better option than risking war. This would be the diplomatic stance for Sweden in the years to come, even as war erupted across Europe. So, what exactly happened during one of the most tumultuous times in human history? How did Sweden manage to stay out of conflict during the early and mid-1900s? For 100 years, there had been peace in Sweden. When World War I erupted in 1914, it seemed Sweden would be flung into the fray. However, at this point in history, Sweden would double down on its pledge to remain neutral in the interest of all Swedes. They would keep the war out of their country and watch as Europe descended into chaos around them. When World War I began, Sweden had a dilemma. The general populace felt more connected to the German Empire as they shared a closer cultural identity with their northern European brethren than the rest of the continent. However, Sweden had a strong trade tie with both Britain and France as well. Because of these conflicting interests, there was no way for Sweden to choose a side without hurting an important relationship. Their choice to remain neutral, even as almost every other country in Europe chose one side or the other, seemed like the right choice for Sweden. Many believed there was no reason to engage in a conflict and jeopardize the peace they had enjoyed for close to a century. The only concern was, what if the Central or Allied powers wouldn't allow them to remain neutral? What if they were forced into a war they wanted no part of? This was where Sweden showcased its ability to be warproof. The decision to remain neutral was made in conjunction with Sweden's neighbors, Denmark and Norway. The Nordic countries sticking together was one of the main reasons why Sweden was safe from the death and destruction of World War I. World War II and the conflicts broke out in the coming decades, and although Sweden technically remained neutral, they almost always favored one side of the conflict. In World War I, Queen Sophie Marie Victoria of Baden, the wife of King Gustav V, was of German descent. She rallied the conservatives of the country behind her cause to support the German side of the war effort. And even though Sweden remained neutral, they did favor the Germans at the beginning of the war through trade and monetary support. As the war dragged on, the sentiment of most Swedes shifted. Due to famine, mass protests, and no real advantage for supporting Germany, the Swedish government decided to relinquish their pro-German policies and become truly neutral. The current cabinet that had made the decisions to aid Germany was removed, and a new conservative cabinet was put in its place. This group of lawmakers enacted democratic reforms to ease social unrest and prevent a rebellion. The main reason that Sweden was warproof during World War I was the strong voices of the general population that wanted the country to remain neutral. The reforms made in the 1800s that had removed absolute power from the monarchy allowed Sweden to refuse the desires of hot-headed kings and queens that wanted to throw the country into war. Its neighbor's decision to remain out of the conflict also helped Sweden resist the call to arms that other countries felt was necessary during World War I. However, in 1939, when Adolf Hitler and the Nazis launched their invasion of Poland and World War II began, Sweden was in a much more difficult position. They would eventually find their neighbors invaded by Germany and Hitler knocking on their door. It almost seemed unfathomable that Sweden could remain neutral during World War II, yet history has shown that this is what happened, even if Sweden was engaging in secret dealings during the war. As the Nazis secured power and things started to escalate in the region, northern European countries looked to one another for guidance. Sweden persuaded many nations in the area to adopt neutralist policies, as they had done during World War I. This may have been done to try and maintain stability in the region. However, it's also possible that Sweden was surrounding itself with neutral nations that could act as a buffer zone if war ever did break out. Unfortunately, this neutrality pact would not stop the Nazis from invading most of northern Europe. Even still, Sweden managed to stay out of direct conflict, once again appearing to be a warproof nation. Before World War II, Sweden, Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Finland, and the Baltic states agreed to remain neutral. Even though these countries declared neutrality, the Nazis did not care. German forces swept through northern Europe, decimating any army that stood in their way. They rolled battalions of tanks into Denmark, sent the Luftwaffe to Norway, and moved troops across Belgium to reach France. It seemed as if there was no stopping the Nazi plague that was enveloping Europe. But when German forces reached the border of Sweden, something astonishing happened. The Nazis stopped their invasion, and Sweden was again saved from war. In fact, Sweden was the only country that wasn't invaded or pulled into World War II out of all the northern countries. That being said, 
Like in past conflicts, Sweden did favor one side over the other. In World War I, Sweden provided support to Germany. However, they were secretly favoring the Allies in World War II. To be fair, Sweden traded with both Germany and the Allied nations throughout the war and they allowed Nazi troops to pass through their borders to get to Finland. So it's a bit of a stretch to say Sweden was completely immune to the war. When you think about it, it seems unbelievable that the Nazis would invade every country in the region but leave Sweden unoccupied. What was it about Sweden that once again kept the country out of a full-blown war? In this circumstance, it was actually a little bit of luck. By the time the Nazis reached Sweden, they had a lot on their plate. They had invaded France, Northern Europe, and were pushing east toward the Soviet Union. The Nazis also needed to send support to Italy to ensure they could hold Southern Europe. This meant Hitler's forces were spread thin, and Sweden wasn't one of his main concerns since they'd remained neutral thus far. There's little doubt that if Hitler was able to secure Europe and defeat the Soviets, he would eventually come for Sweden. However, this did not happen. By 1941, Norway had been secured by the Nazis, and although the Soviets had invaded and occupied Finland, the Finnish people were fighting to reclaim their country. The Nazis made a deal with Finland where they would work together to push the Soviets back. Finland agreed to the terms and became allies with Germany for the time being. At this point in the war, Sweden was entirely surrounded by Nazi-controlled territories, but Hitler's focus was on Russia. Sweden remaining neutral throughout the war and never being invaded meant it was in a unique position as World War II progressed. Its land wasn't ravaged by bloody battles, its cities weren't crumbling from artillery sieges, and the Swedish population wasn't decimated by the slaughter of the men and women during the global conflict. Sweden also became a refuge for people fleeing the conflict. It's estimated that 70,000 Finnish children were evacuated to Sweden. Remarkably, almost all of the Jews in Denmark were also able to escape to Sweden in fishing boats where they were offered asylum from the Nazis. Again, Sweden declared it was neutral in World War II, but it was definitely favoring the Allies. The Swedish government must have known that if Adolf Hitler was able to win the war, it would only be a matter of time before the Nazis invaded their homeland. Even though they technically managed to remain war-proof once again during the Second World War, it was only because the Nazis were busy trying to conquer the Soviet Union and maintain their hold on the Eastern Front that Sweden was spared from the German conquest. After World War II, it was clear that Sweden would need help if they were going to remain war-proof in the future. Talks began to develop a Scandinavian defense union that would include Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Basically, Sweden once again looked to surround itself with like-minded countries that could act as buffers and allies if the war ever came knocking again. However, as the Soviet Union became more powerful and set its sights on controlling more of Eastern Europe, the United States offered these nations a better deal. On April 4, 1949, the United States and its allies formed NATO. This powerful organization would provide Norway and Denmark with much more protection against the growing Soviet threat than a Scandinavian pact ever could. Sweden realized if they joined NATO, it would put them in the crosshairs of the USSR, and for the first time since 1814, they would be joining an alliance that would force them into a war. This was not acceptable to the Swedish people or government, so they declined NATO's offer and continued their policy of neutrality. It's worth mentioning that the only way a neutral country can ensure that a power-hungry neighbor doesn't invade it is by having the best military and weapons possible. Sweden knew this, so they made it mandatory for every Swedish citizen to serve in the military and procure the most advanced weapons they could get their hands on. These weapons were mostly coming from the United States. Sweden refused to join NATO, but it couldn't refuse to buy American weapons if it was going to have any chance of remaining warproof in case the Soviets decided to invade their borders. As the Cold War became hotter and hotter, Sweden doubled down on neutrality. They wanted to act as a buffer between the West and the Soviet Union to try to prevent nuclear war from breaking out. In reality, Sweden closely allied itself with NATO through the procurement of weapons and aiding in spy missions in the Soviet Union. Also, declassified documents of war game training that happened during the Cold War in Sweden included NATO coming to their aid if the Soviet Union ever did invade. Basically, there was an understanding that even though Sweden wasn't a part of NATO, if it ever was attacked, the alliance would likely have no choice but to intervene. The Soviets probably knew this as well, offering Sweden another line of protection. During the Cold War, it wasn't so much Sweden's neutrality that kept it warproof, it was its closeness to NATO countries that protected it. In the 1960s, the United States even made a military security guarantee to Sweden that if they were ever attacked, the US would come to their aid. This was because Sweden was secretly allowing the US to deploy submarines with nuclear warheads along their coast, from where they'd be able to hit Moscow if war ever broke out. So even though many people like to believe that Sweden stayed out of war and conflict because of their strict neutrality, it wasn't really true. 
Sweden chose to be neutral for almost 200 years, but this was only possible because of the nations that surrounded it acting as a buffer, secret dealings with powerful countries, and luck that actually made Sweden warproof for so long. After the Cold War ended, Sweden began to decrease the size of its military and weapon spending. In 1995, it joined the European Union with the stipulation that it would not join the Defense Pact, so it could remain neutral in armed conflicts. This worked well for over a decade, but when Vladimir Putin rose to power and showed clear signs of being unstable and aggressive, Sweden questioned whether it should remain neutral or join in a defense agreement with other nations for protection. In 2009, Sweden entered a mutual self-defense treaty with the rest of the EU and Nordic countries that bound them to aid in a war if any nations ever were attacked. Article 42.7 in the Treaty of Lisbon states, if an EU country is the victim of armed aggression on its territory, other EU countries have an obligation to aid and assist it by all means in their power. This brought nearly 200 years of Swedish neutrality to an end. It also meant that the country was no longer warproof. If any European nation was attacked, Sweden would have to go to war. Now, with the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, Sweden is desperately trying to join NATO. The country realizes that neutrality will not work against a power-hungry dictator that has no issues with invading neighboring nations to create a new Russian empire. Therefore, Sweden needs to join NATO before Putin declares war on the region, otherwise their application will be forfeit. It's now clear that Sweden is no longer warproof. That being said, if Russia ever did invade Sweden or even Finland, the rest of the EU would have to come to their aid. If this happened, NATO would then be dragged into the conflict and World War III would commence. Sweden may have been able to stay out of wars for nearly 200 years, but it appears that that time for peace is now over. Now watch these countries are impossible to invade, or check out where you wouldn't want to live if World War III starts.